today we're taking a look at this rather interesting radio cassette deck from the 1980s. Um, it's a Philips unit. Uh, the exact model number is the Philips. The Philips something. Oh, is it underneath? Ah, here you go. Oh, it's full of bits of dead plastic. So this is the Philips uh, D8304805T, apparently. And it seems to be full of little bits of broken plastic. So it would be interesting to see where that has come from a little bit later. So... I've already tested this and the radio works, which is good. I haven't tested the cassette, so before I do anything with the cassette, I want to um, give everything a clean up and also uh, probably change the belts on the cassette deck as well, just so that we start from somewhere good that we know. So we start from an even sort of keel, so to speak, even footing. So Looking at this, I can see that there is a bit of plastic broken off on this cassette cover, but given the age of the machine that's to be expected. I think the first thing that we need to do is to give it a bit of a cosmetic clean because it literally looks like it has actually been used as a plasterer's radio and uh, not just the rather amusing term that I won't go into here that uh, you can find described in the Vis Profanosaurus. So there are little bits of cement on it, there's little bits of plaster, there's bits of paint that you can see here which um, does seem to scrape off thankfully. Uh, other thing that I've noticed as well is that the switches on the top here are quite dirty so I haven't got any electrical contact cleaner to hand, so I'm going to try this video head cleaner and see if that does the same job. So I think first off, let's give it a bit of a wipe down and see how the front comes up. So I'll do this before we go anywhere inside of the unit. So I might need to get a bit of white spirit on it as well, but initially... That's actually coming up quite well. So there's a good comparison there between this one and this one. So this is the one that we've cleaned. That's got the little specks of paint, which do just lightly come off of the application of the finger now. And the rest of it, which is really quite slimy. So I think the best thing is if we just give it a bit of a general wipe down with this degreaser first. Now the way I'm doing it is I'm spraying the degreaser directly onto the tissue because I don't want to spray the degreaser directly onto the unit. The last thing I want is to get any excess amounts of fluid inside of the unit itself whilst everything is still assembled and still in one piece. So, there we go. I'm not sure what the actual date of this is. If I was going to guess by the aesthetics, my current money is on between 1985 and 1987. Uh, it seems that a lot of later 80s stuff actually went for a more black finish. So you went through this sort of kind of more colourful phase through the mid 80s. Early 80s you had a lot of grey finish sort of stuff. That's where you had the sort of traditional ghetto blasters as they were known, such as the sharp oh god, I've forgotten the modern number, but it's worth a lot of money now. It's got so um, quite a following. But you went through that sort of whole phase of very sort of uh, aluminium and chrome finish and aluminium and chrome looking units through to 
this sort of uh, phase we had more colour, usually on the lower end models like this, or sort of mid lower end, so this doesn't have anything like um, Dolby noise reduction or anything like that, but it does have the four band tuner, it does have a graphic equaliser and it does have high speed dubbing and two cassette decks. It's also got an aux in and it's got this supposedly five speaker system which seems to mimic the Hitachi's uh, 3D superwoofer system which was around at a similar time and there is a Hitachi in my collection funny enough that was one uh, unit a few months back where I had to um, overhaul the, uh, the tape player side of things it needed new belts so not sure where we stand as regards the belts on this machine but you can see with very short cleanup that we are looking quite a bit better and quite a bit cleaner than we were so we're just going to give this top part a bit of a clean up and then I think the next thing to do will be to get the uh, unit dismantled and we'll start to have a look inside and see how things are looking inside of the deck. So there are little bits of paint left on here which we'll probably need to work on on a more individual basis but a simple wipe over is cleaning up an awful lot of this machine which is good. A little bit on these buttons which needs probably a bit more in-depth action. Although the degreaser seems to be doing a good job with those. Bringing that up quite nicely. And overall that's looking a lot better than it was. So there are on here a couple of carrying things which I would imagine a strap went round so you could actually have this on a strap making it quite portable. Graphic equaliser is quite a pleasant looking setup. That's actually one thing that's sort of quite interesting on this machine of this price bracket is to actually have a graphic equaliser. So normally you wouldn't expect that until you've sort of got far higher up in bracket price range. Instead of a balance control you've got two volume controls so one for left, one for right. It's also got a lot of paint over the minimum sign which with a little rub seems to come up. Let's see if I can do something similar with the volume. That's come up quite nicely and let's see if we can do something about this big lump of paint here. And with a bit of a rub and possibly a little bit of a scrape as well. I seem to be getting somewhere with it. So the more I work in this degreaser, the more of that comes up superbly. So that's actually come up rather well. So I think the next thing, so we've got these buttons along the top that will do the same treatment on the, to these ones. So apply the same treatment that we applied to the other ones, which is more of a deep clean. Might need to get a toothbrush on those actually, just to really get into the uh, get into the um, symbols on the top, so they've actually been moulded into the top of the unit. Uh, what we'll do now is give this a quick, as far as I can, wipe in there. But it'll probably be easier once I've got this dismantled. And there we go. 
already looking a lot better. So let's go around to the back and let's have a look at how this is assembled. So we have a number of very deep reach screws. Uh, hopefully I won't need to break out my other screwdriver set. And hopefully I'll be able to do something with this screwdriver set, which doesn't look like I'll be able to. So what, oh actually, let's see if I can do something with these. into there. Probably easier if I just go and get the proper set of screwdrivers that I have rather than trying to uh, be lazy and do it that way. But whilst I'm around here, might as well clean up some of these surfaces. So we have around the aux in socket here, which comes up surprisingly well. But along the top here, along here, and the aerial's been broken off, so we'll need to get a replacement aerial for it, which shouldn't be too difficult. They're quite common, and they seem to be shared between a lot of things in this area. And we'll sit the bike down. Actually, coming up quite nicely. So there's still loads of paint droplets everywhere, which we need to attend to. But that, if I whip it round, is looking a hell of a lot better than it did. Right, let's go and fetch those screwdrivers and get inside the beast. Mm -hmm. 